What is up, goons, gangsters, and gamers? It's your boy, Good Sir Knight. Today we're doing a special review, two part, on the uh, first off, the Cry AVS, was it the M4 flap with the three little bungee inserts, and also the Blue Force Gear 10 speed magazine pouch, with the little Helium Whisper attachment system. So, to get started with the uh, AVS flap, a bit of an interesting thing, the way we've gone about this. So, rack around as early as I can remember, 2005. Bungee retention was just starting to kick off. And it was pretty cool because you can get rid of the big elastic magazine flaps and get access to your mags and stuff relatively easy. So all you gotta do is pull that tab out of the way. So, this is a big thing. In 2010, when the first JPC kicked off, it had the attached uh, mag flap because those are still kind of a big deal. And you could put 5.56 mags in there. Great if you're running an M4, but a lot of people were kind of interested in running 7.62 DMRs and all that and submachine guns and whatnot. So a lot of them would just cut that thing right on out. And, uh... Add a little few clip attachments up here, and then they would use those attachments to uh, put a little placards and stuff, panels, things, get your uh, appropriate magazine sizes. So, if you're interested in that, that was kind of a big deal. So, Cry came up with a JPC 2.0, where they just had the exposed flap to begin with, and that concept carried over to the SPC. However, if you're interested in keeping a very, very low profile, being able to still get into the pro and have relatively easy access to mags and everything, this is kind of an ideal setup. People tend to get carried away a lot with the um, the high speed nature of things. They go, oh, well, if we went from flaps to bungees, then surely the next step would go to be bungees to kydex and getting those open pouches, the speed pouches, and all that cool stuff going. Haley had the MP2 inserts and stuff. Those all caught them pretty well, but um, yeah, because they're easy, they're faster to get in. You could one handed uh, re index and stuff. But one of the things I even personally had to overcome this because I was reviewing the D3CRM well, not all that long ago when I started to learn more about this setup and the longer I stared at it and the more I kind of let it percolate into the old brain housing group learned a few interesting things so the initial reluctance comes from if you're in your e old firefight and you got to reload you go oh well now I gotta pull this bungee out of the way and then pull out the magazine and it's not as fast as well speed pouches but I got kind of a, uh, a little epiphany that I bounce back and forth with my buddy, that if you do run out of rounds, you should always have a first line speed, you do need a speed pouch, just not here. This is your backup contingency mags. Odds are you're not going to go through too many rounds in a real world situation, but we'd like to prepare for the worst. So, worst case scenario, if your gun does go dry, you have some sort of issue, you gotta throw out the magazine, you can just reach down here, and there's your new one. Real quick, fast, super easy. So, AVS. Why is it important to... I mean, we can cover the bungees. Not a big in fact if you have access to another mag. So, bungees, still jumpable. The JPC was the jumpable plate carrier, so you can jump off things with bungees. Preferably with a parachute, <laughs> but, you know. Um, so the bungees are nice. They work. There's a few improvements over the JPC. You have to move a few of these things out of the way, like my protective shears. So the key improvements... How far can we see here? Is the... Uh, there's actually an extra piece of Velcro up here, or not Velcro, but a uh, Molly up here, and that's what the bungee weaves through. Well, that bungee actually comes down here into the back. If you can see it, the bungee's back there, and that's where it ties together, and it's out of the way. So you're not going to have any real risk of that coming untied when you don't want it to. If you look in there close enough, I don't know if you guys can really see it. Usually the camera picks it better than what I can see on the screen here. Yeah, there we go. If you look inside, there is actually Velcro. Soft Velcro on the inside, and the... Uh, Pointy, sharp Velcro, also known as, this is not a hook and loop professionally, but we're not professionals here, so. Got the spiky Velcro on the outside. And what that does is when your magazines are out, it folds flat. Now, the Helium Whisper up here, as you can see, is already incredibly flat, so if we wanted to, we can go prone. Prone's a big thing. A lot of people don't, uh, well, I guess a lot of people do talk about it, but some people ignore it. One of the things I was running to an issue-wise, less so with the S-Tac pouches, because I do love me some S-Tac, but particularly the Haley, and even to a degree the uh, the Spiritus Mark IV, is that that's a lot of bulk off the body that's going to make going prone very difficult unless you leave that front pouch empty. And even then, the elastic on Spiritus is very much subpar to the Blue Force gear. And in addition, if you need any extra evidence, Blue Force gear and Cry have these military contracts, and uh, Spiritus, not so much. If you like Spiritus, that's cool, but... If you can get better products for cheaper, all both of these together cost me what sub a hundred dollars altogether. So you just can't micro chest rig it. 
easily. You can do anything you put your mind to, if you believe. But probably not easy. <laughs> there's, there's definitely ways. But um, so yeah, magazines can go in there. There are the, uh, is that elastic? Yeah, there are elastic dividers on the inside, so it will keep the three mags separate. You can adjust the bungee retention down there at the bottom. You can use different bungee inserts if you so choose. But particularly with that extra bit up here, it does let the mag sit a little bit lower, which is great if you're going to be running a push to talk where I currently have my doge patch. And, um, oh, how did, how did that get there? Oops. <laughs> That's a surprise tool we'll use later. No, I'm joking. <laughs> so you got your mags in there. So what's cool is a lot of people, they would just pop their placards off, which is decent enough. You remove between submachine guns and stuff. So there's still a, a place and a role for different magazine placards. Being dedicated to one gun has its ups and downs. I like my familiarity and mastery more than being kind of like whatever at different we different weapon systems. You're probably gonna get whatever anyway, but the more you train specifically with like just one very specific, specific tool that you love and cherish dearly, it's gonna benefit you a lot in the long run. So, the mags, if we take all our mags out, we can get to our point here. Um, bungees. So you will have to do two-hand reloads and reinserts. I mean, can we? Let's see. If it's still popped open, you can do a one-hand re-index. So it doesn't need to be Crydex. I think some people are talking about the uh, Mark IV, but you don't do that. But you got all those removed. You can see on the inside there. So little elastic nubbies for separation. And that's pretty cool. So if you actually fold that flat, though, you remove practically all the bulk. And now you're just down to a plate. So if you're doing lots of... Humvee work, you have to do a lot of driving that require, necessitates the need of a plate carrier. That's a really cool addition. When I was enlisted, more than a, oh, it's almost been a decade now, yeah, since I got out. When I was enlisted, big thing you had to do with your <laughs> help with your, uh, was it the interceptors and all that is you had to weave everything through the molly and you had to do the closure straps and you'd always bruise a finger somehow or jack up a nail, crazy stuff like that. And they're like, oh, yeah, you're going to go do this exercise. You need all these pouches. We put everything together. You're like, oh, man, that sucks. They're like, oh, by the way, you're going to be doing a lot of Humvee work for the next uh, three months. And you might need those pouches again later. But you strip all that off. It's too much bulk. It's going to get in the way. So if you like that, that was cool. But this easy, simple setup, we can clean it down really effectively. So continuing on with our AVS, our, uh, AVS flap. You know the bun down there that clips into place to help keep the uh, Velcro from flying off and doing crazy stuff. And it also gets in the way of having a sort of like dangler pouch. You can work around it if you know how to sew. It's not that hard. A little bit of practice or a hire a professional. Get the mama on at the barracks. She can uh, fix up your dangler. Or you can just wear a, what was it, a little M-Dom pouch. I like the M-Dom fanny pack. It's comfy. And you can even throw your medical and stuff in there. So, with all that taken care of, let's actually pop this open and look at the back of Velcro. As you can see, we've got our front flaps up here, but one of the key things, key detail I learned anyway, so if you come on over here, they do use these four little um, drop down points here, and these are going to basically secure this. These are detachable, so if you take these out, you can remove this and go back to your fun little placards and crazy stuff if you so choose. But the way this is set up, I do like this particularly because that gives you your extra hold to the Velcro. And if you're running a Airlight radio pouch or something crazy like that. Make sure you put this on top. <laughs> I was dicking around with it earlier and I had this underneath and oh boy that Airlight actually you're losing all that Velcro down there too. That Airlight pouch is gonna be stuck up here forever which will make inserting these tabs to that little slot there a complete pain. So if you're doing it put these on top. Cool little design feature I thought was really neat is how they keep the Velcro off of here. So when you're popping up the flap, that's not going to catch on the end of this and pull it up and open. That's going to stay down forever when it starts getting the pool is up here in the middle. And that's going to have no impact on the Velcro whatsoever, making this easy on and off, up and down. So that's pretty cool. So yeah, those just run under there. They don't really impact the uh, SPC flaps or inserts or anything too crazy. And you just fold those on over and you're nice, good and comfy. So that's the inside there. Actually, you can kind of, you can see the stitching there for the uh, elastic bungees. And I don't think you can see the, I guess you can. There's the inner elastic up there where it's sewn in to get the full connection. So on the uh, side here, you might be pretty, it's pretty easy to notice. It's going to be your simple molly setup. Was it the uh, six across? Yeah, six across and three down. Pretty standard for a front flap, which is where the, uh, ah, the blue force gear is pretty fancy. Oh yeah, your bungees just go through that first loop. Kind of standard. If you've been around bungees a lot, you more or less know the drill, just with the added benefit of that elastic being 
or the, yeah, the bungee being placed down there for the tie-off point. So if you want longer bungee or anything, you could just swap those out relatively easy. Or with a bungee brakes, easy replace, simple field fix, carry extra elastic with you. So with that set up, that pretty much sets it up perfectly for the uh, Blue Force Gear 10-speed pouch. This is what we're going to be moving into now. Pending any further questions on the AVS, feel free to comment down below. It's a pretty simple, pretty simple setup, but I feel like this needs to be covered because not too many people are really talking about it. There are a lot of the cool benefits and cool things you can do with it. So, what's unique here with the uh, Blue Force Gear 10-speed pouch is you have this military-grade, like, super powerful elastic. It will wear out if you leave stuff in there. You're getting all that deformation. You're not going to let the elastic sort of, like, reset or anything. So you can wear it out if you just leave things in there. So you want to keep take everything out of these when not in use. And if you're going to go do th something, then you just got to grab your mag and you just slide that in there. They don't just hold mags. You can put tourniquets. You can put lights. You can put uh, scissors. What do I have lying around that I can jam in here? You can put scissors in there, obviously. And you can actually, I find it best to put the scissors here in front of the uh, side mags because you're going to be pulling from the left side first initially anyway. Well, that mentality, I guess, has changed a bit now that you have... If you have a fast mag, you don't have to worry so much about it. If you're not wearing a belt line, this little extra mag up here becomes pretty useful because now you can keep your three back here, and if you need to get to that fourth one, it's quick, easy, super simple pull. Most importantly, despite my best efforts and going inverted, which I'm not going to do on camera because I'll fall over, because I need a lot more practice on my handstands. If you do go inverted, this mag ain't going anywhere. It only goes somewhere when you want it to. Thank you, magazine. Very polite. So, you can throw pretty much anything and everything you want in here. Find spare gear. Can I fit my... Can I fit my Glock in here? Let's find out. Alright, that's pretty cool. <laughs> I mean, I kind of figured it would work, because I've jammed uh, Glocks in old-school double M4 pouches in the past. As a joke, of course. Nah, I was just curious. But yeah, you can do that if you don't have a holster. If you find a, someone drops a weapon or something, you don't want to just throw it in the dump pouch and you have a spare place, you need to secure and contain that weapon. Secure, contain, and protect that weapon. You can jam it on in there. Obviously, it's going to get a bit of deformation if we leave it in there for long term, but it gives you cool, simple little pouches if you need to throw any... Well, I don't know, say your job is on the breaching team and you're the uh, lock picker, you can throw your lock picking tools in there relatively easy. I'm sorry, uh, locksmithing tools. That sounds far less criminal despite being the exact same thing. Yeah, you can throw all your cool stuff in there. Neat. So, these bungees, they're not going to be a huge hindrance to reloading, especially if you're not in immediate danger. If you are in immediate danger, please result your uh, fast mag, your 911 mag, your oh snap, this is bad, I need to fix my rifle mag, or drawing your handgun is always faster than reloading, allegedly. That, uh, that's getting pretty dated and might not be true anymore. <laughs> so that's pretty much everything you got here. These, um, I almost forgot the key, Healing Whisper. Healing Whisper is basically Hypalon with added elastic little nubbies down here. So this actually Velcros down here into the bottom and the Hypalon just weaves through. It's pretty well made. You can put this on the front of practically anything. So if you're running a uh, LVT 6094 or an AVS, sometimes an AVS panel, if you're running pretty much any plate carrier, that's a pretty much standard setup, or even a JPC 1.0. Wow, how old school and classic. If you're running any of those, you can slap this on any one of those and beef up your mag capacity. If you're carrying three mags, pretty standard. If you want to beef up to six because you're expecting not only contact but an intense firefight and you're not going to have a lot of time for reloads, then yeah, throw in six up here. Doable. Just take the front three out when you're done because you'll really want to protect that elastic. This elastic, though, I am confident. It'll hold up to all sorts of bushes, brushes, and any sort of nastiness, low crawling over rocks and stuff. It'll hold up pretty much just fine. Not too worried there. And being able to go super slick is great. I wish I could uh, do this um, to myself far as easy, but that's where the exercise and diet comes in. I'm sorry. Can't just buy a magic pill and make it disappear. Anyway, pop that back open pretty easy. Oh, there's a little ABS flap in there. I'm not sure at the moment if Cry is making any 7.62 flaps or anything crazy like that. You might, and I would like to also see this made out of Airlite. I know, pretty, uh, pretty fancy. Airlite's a pretty cool material. If you can make this same AVS flap out of Airlite, I think it would do particularly well. They do have the Airlite uh, standard flap that doesn't hold the magazines. And I guess that'd be pretty cool, lightweight, if you want to slap extra stuff on there. If you are running 7.62 or submachine guns, you don't want to deal with those crazy placards, you can get the... Uh, the air light flap and then just mount everything on there kind of 
standard, you know. So there's options, you can do that. If you're running 556, five, this is a pretty easy, simple, and a straightforward thing. And I guess if you were running some machine gun mags, you can jam them in there, put them under the bungees. Or more specifically, these these uh, elastic pouches are fantastic. If you had to run... Do I got a... Let me see. I think I got an old... It's airsoft, but... Maybe an old Glock 50 round. <laughs> oh my god. If you really wanted to carry some extra some machine guns or Stendo long boys, you can make it work. It's a little loose, but doable. Not designed for it, but options. So that's all I really got for you guys today. It's a cool setup. I wanted to share it with you if you're looking for something really low profile so you can still go prone effectively. Or if you need to, you also have the flexibility of carrying six mags, three mags, or whatever you really need to get done. Cool setup. Uh, I've seen it a few times out in the wild, and I really, really like it. So that's going to be my go-to for uh, the foreseeable future until something crazy happens and we get laser rifles. Space Force, I'm looking at you. Let's make it happen. That's all I got. Cheers. Stay silver. If you have any questions, let me know down in the comments below. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. And you can also put your, I like putting the shears and stuff up here. You can put all sorts of crazy stuff in the front, out in the back. And there's a little bit of space here on the sides from where the elastic the attachment points are. But yeah, cheers. Stay shivless, everyone. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.